the occasion of Ghana's 65th anniversary of independence, I would like to congratulate our young people in the Adventist Church and the nation as a whole. Your enormous contribution to the growth of the Adventist Church in Ghana cannot be overemphasized. Our church and the country have come this far because of your dedication, commitment, and selfless service over the years. On behalf of the Youth Ministries Department, I wish you are equal well done. Again, on this special occasion, I would like to remind you that as we await for the imminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ, we still have many mission fields to enter with the three angels' message. We still have a lot of dying souls to win for Christ for our dear country. Remember, you are the wings of the three angels' message. Therefore, arise and equip yourselves with the various trainings that the church, particularly the youth department, is providing you so that you can be uh, you can be tools to provide how quickly the message of a crucified risen and soon coming savior can be carried to the entire country if not the entire world do you know that our dear church forefathers were all young people do you also realize that the youth make up the majority of our dear church and nation and that the growth of the church and our country is dependent on you? Do you know that the young people play a critical role in community and national development and social change? Do you know that our dear church forefathers were all young people? Do you know, do you also realize that the youth make up the majority of our dear church and nation? and that the growth of the church and our country is dependent on you? Do you know that the young people play a critical role in community and national development and social change? Various studies have revealed that young people are significant force with the potential to contribute significantly to national development. As a result, the church and the nation cannot thrive without your invaluable assistance. I implore you to use your divinely endowed zeal, passion, and energy for mission, and to use your expertise to provide critical solutions and development for our nation, Ghana. Let us have nationalistic spirit as well as a sense of public service and goodness. And keep in mind that you are the development wheel and how productive and creative you are affects the church and the nation. Let us have nationalistic spirit as well as a sense of public service and goodness. And keep in mind that you are the development wheel and how productive and creative you are affects the church and the nation. Because you provide labor for the nation's production of goods and services, you are the engine of growth and development. Furthermore, you are the critical mass of our citizenry, and your actions and inactions have the power to shape or destroy the fabrics of us. As the most active segment of any society, you are the primary determinants of our country's peace and stability. Remember that peace is a prerequisite for development and that the absence of peace means that no meaningful development can occur. As the most active segment of any society, you are the primary determinants of our country's peace and stability. Remember that peace is a prerequisite for development and that the absence of peace means that no meaningful development can occur. Let us rise up and build our dear nation Ghana into a safe haven for all of us. 
be at the forefront of Christ's work while also reflecting Christ in all aspects of your lives. Be Christ's ambassadors in your schools, homes, streets, workplaces, and in all aspects of your lives. Let us rise and contribute to our dear church's agenda and mission. Be at the forefront of Christ's work while also reflecting Christ in all aspects of your lives. Be Christ's ambassadors in your schools, homes, streets, workplaces, and in all aspects of your lives. Let us rise and contribute to our dear church's agenda and mission. God bless you and have a wonderful 65th independent anniversary. Official By the grace of God, Ghana is 65 years old. But during this period of time, we are faced with a global pandemic. Friends, this global pandemic is not new because it has occurred and reoccurred and reoccurred with time. Record reveals that in 165 AD, they have the Antonia Plague. In 1347, they had the Black Death Plague. The smallpox pandemic lasted for four years in 1870. Then, Corella came in 1875 and it has lasted for many years corella is not new it is not new to us it's as old as the world they are all pandemics the russia flu flu of 1889 also came and the spanish flu they are all global when they come they affect the whole world then we have H3N2 pandemic, that is influenza, in 1968. Then AIDS, HIV AIDS came. It is reoccurring and reoccurring. SARS has come and it is reoccurring. And so today we find ourselves in COVID-19 pandemic. The question is, how do we behave? How do we treat it? It's a global pandemic. Some lasted many years, but how we will comport ourselves and organize ourselves 
and address issues so far as COVID is concerned, we can either eliminate or reduce the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Beloved, we have to follow the World Health Organization protocols. We have to learn to wash our hands under dripping water with soap. We have to use our sanitizers. We have to use our face masks. It looks as if we are dropping it. And so we are not applying it now in public. But friends, let us not lose God. Let us keep our social distance. It is a health pandemic. And so let us all be each other's keeper so that by the grace of God, we will fight this pandemic and soon and very soon, it will go down. Until Christ comes, another pandemic will come. But for now, let's make do with what we have, COVID-19, and do our honest part. The COVID-19 pandemic has lasted three years already. And in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Now we have enough knowledge on COVID-19. And therefore, beloved, let us use the knowledge we have about COVID-19 and use the World Health Organization protocols to keep it down, if not to eliminate it. God bless you. Happy 65th anniversary.
dearly beloved, the Mobia Frishiapa Afe Mko Mbotien Biu. On behalf of the leadership of the Seventh day Adventist Church in Ghana, I bring you warm greetings and special divine blessings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. To all church members and leaders and citizens of this nation, but especially to the youth and the young adults, I commend all of you for last year for all your heartfelt given evangelism activities, community services, and church societal activities, among others. On the occasion of the National Independence Anniversary, I call on you to walk down the memory lane and appreciate the sacrifices and contributions of our forebears and be inspired to go forward. Our national song, Yenara Asasini, Eyabwode Nde Demaye, Muja Nanano Mfie Gwin, Edru Yensu Yesuse, Ye Baby Atuaso. That our forebears did so much, sacrificed even their lives for us. It is now our turn to also do something to continue with the good work. This is why I bring you this call, a call to renewed spirit of volunteerism. Volunteerism has been defined as the principle of donating time and energy for the benefit of other people in community as a social responsibility rather than for a financial reward. Otherwise defined, volunteerism is volunteering one time or talents for charitable, educational or other worldwide activities including church and mission. Why now? Recent global news on wars, disasters, economic downturns should remind us of our biblical prophetic timetable requiring us to position ourselves as members and leaders of the last day remnant church. And my conclusion and call is to renew our spirit of volunteering in times like this. This must be a time to be grateful and supportive. A time to appreciate the gift of peace and comfort in our country granted us by God. Not a time to call for doom and woe, but a time to prepare ourselves to help others and to inspire hope. This must be a time to appreciate the gift of peace and comfort from the Lord for our, to our nation. Not a time to call for doom and woe. This is a time to prepare ourselves to help others and inspire hope. This is a time to point to God's plan of hope through our words and act of kindness. Volunteering will help finish the Lord's work. In these last days, volunteers must work side by side with ministers to hasten the coming of the Lord. There are simply not enough missionaries and ministers to go around. So where does the church find enough people to fill that need? The answer is volunteers. They are cost effective. They are young and may be old. They come from many countries and regions and districts and communities. And with different skills and gifts, they are willing to do just about anything, anywhere, anytime. In the Old Testament times, the example that comes to mind is that of Joshua. He was always there for Moses unappointed, unknown, unseen, but always there for him. He ended up as the president of Israel beyond Jordan. In the New Testament times, the example that comes to Mark is John Mark, who chose to be a volunteer to assist Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. Later became the scribe of Peter and a minister Paul described as profitable for ministry. So we must be serving God by reaching out to others. Every person has the ability to make a difference in somebody else's life. No matter what difficulty you may be facing, there is always someone you can lend a hand to. There is always someone who can draw from your strength. In times of disasters, we see how many people create extra time and choose to volunteer at disaster sports, hospitals and other places. These people recognize that. No matter how bad things may be in their own lives, there is always someone else in a more difficult situation. But it is always easier to do so when you have planned ahead and practiced in common and regular negotiations first 
understanding that, as prophesied, disasters and wars will come in the end. I know that it pleases the heart of God when we reach out to those who are hurting and in need. In fact, Jesus himself said that, whatever you do for those who are in need, you are really doing it for him, as in Matthew 25, verse 40. To this end, I call upon departmental directors and leaders of the youth, public campus ministry and chaplaincy, women ministry, Adventist men ministries, Adventist community services, Adra Ghana, church boards and all leaders to pray, to think and to act in this direction for our times. My brother, my sister, I also encourage you today to find someone in whose life you can be a blessing, maybe through church, maybe through your family or group. You can volunteer to bless. Maybe you can share a meal uh, or with an encouraging word to someone you know who is in need. Remember, God promises that when you reach out and bless others, He will bless you abundantly in return. Let's do our part to be a blessing everywhere we go, everywhere we find ourselves. Remember, God promises that when you reach out and bless others, He will bless you abundantly in return. Let's do our part to be a blessing to everyone, everywhere, as we go. The author of the book of Hebrews, in concluding his epistle, wrote in Hebrews 13 from verse 14, For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise from the fruit of our lips that openly professes his name. And in verse 16, he emphasizes, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And now I made a God of peace, who through the blood of eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing that you need for doing his will. And may he with us, may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Afrisha Po, happy National Independence Anniversary. God richly bless us, Maranatha.